today we're going to go over how to script your own Unity button. So it includes like predefined information and uh, formatting. Uh, and if we inspect this, uh, you'll see that it, it has a new base button script, which includes some scaling and some sounds when you're interacting with the button. So to see that in action, let's go into the game mode. This is the button that we've been using. As you can see, when we hover, it scales out. Uh, and it has that button sound when you hover. When you click, it has a, its own button there. And again, it scales in. Uh, and then when it's actually pressed, you can hear those sounds as well. Uh, and then with the coloring, it uses the transition from the actual button class. Uh, so we can kind of either change this to like the pressed, let's go like green. And you'll see that when you press it, it'll turn green here. But then at the same time, we can just turn it off. And then it'll just stick with like the, the regular color that we have. Enable that back in. Uh, sound wise, you can mute it if you don't want the sound. And see that we're going over and nothing's happening. And then if we want the sound, and if you want like, a custom sound for the button for some of the transitions here, uh, you can come in, add a new one. And then if you just like click, you'll see the see you hear that new sound there. And on the other side, the button route, and you just create a button, you see here that it's gonna be a lot to change to actually get to where we're at here. So I, I believe this is like a lot easier just to create a nice base and then work from there while you're uh, working on your project. And you can always create other options in the menu here. If you go into the menu, uh, we do have this one button, but like you can have different styles and stuff uh, and different properties associated with that. First thing we'll do is create a new mono behavior script. We'll come in here, create mono behavior. And let's just call it like extended button. With this script here, the main goal is to recreate like the different transition states that are available and what we want to modify. So to do that, we're going to extend some interfaces from the Unity event systems. First, I'll just go to I pointer and we're going to go click handler. So this will handle like the clicking when you click down on the game object that this uh, script is attached to. And do I select handler? That will just handle like the when you're moving, say with the keyboard or remote. Next one is I pointer enter handler. So we want to control when we enter, and then also when we exit. And that's just when the when the mouse uh, pointer enters and exits the object. And with that, we're going to do like a little scaling and maybe a little button uh, sound. And then the last one we want to handle is the I pointer up handler and then down handler. The first method is the on pointer click, so that's the on pointer click handler. Enter. Next is the exit. Down. And up. The top, you can see the required component. We're just requiring the button should be there. Then you can also just do like a selectable object as well for the serialized fields so they're available in the unity editor so if you want to change anything based upon like a specific button game object and not the script uh, you can do that here we have the mute sound button to be muted and then the different sounds per transition uh, right now we have it set to the default like the sound manager class that we have and then the hover effect scale which just determines how large the scale is when you're like hovering or when you're clicking uh, for the variables inside, we have the original scale, <coughs> which you can see in the start just scores uh, stores that original transformation scale. We have this pointer down and is pointer inside. Uh, we had issues when you had the pointer inside and then clicked. So this is just a way to keep track of where the pointer is. And, and then last, we have the button component, which is associated to the game object. And we're using this to just check some conditionals on if the button is interactable at the moment. And in, in the awake, we set that button component. And how we know this isn't going to be null is with this require component on top here. So going through the different methods that we implemented on the pointer click, you can see we're doing a check if it's interactable and if it's not muted, play the press sound button uh, on select. Similar idea where we do the selected sound. So on pointer enter and exit is one place that we're doing the scaling along with the playing of the sound. So we're checking first if it's interactable, then we're setting that variable we shown above to true, and then checking if the other one is false. In that case, 
We're going to set the scale based upon the hover effect scale along with uh, playing the sound if it's not muted. On the exit, we're just kind of doing the opposite where we're setting the scale back to the original depending on that variable as well. On the pointer down, pointer up, we're going to be playing a sound on pointer down. And then also uh, we're going to be doing the scale on the opposite direction. So we're going to make it a little smaller when you're putting the pointer down just to indicate that you're like pressing on it. Uh, and then on pointer up, we're just going to again revert the scale back to the original scale. So the the three methods that we had that haven't been reviewed yet are just like the playing of the sound buttons. Uh, there's a few tutorials online that actually get specifics, but it's checking if the serialized field sound is available. And if it is, it'll go to that sound manager and play the specific sound associated. Otherwise, it'll go into the specific uh, sound manager, uh, play hover sound or play click sound and that is associated to a, a scriptable object of the sounds for the, like the game or specific scene that we're in. If we go back to the button scene. Okay, so now with that script completed, we're going to go into the... With that script completed, we're going to go into the scene and create a new button. And just kind of see how we're going to attach that from the scratch. So we're going to change the position, change the height, say 800 by 250. And we're going to come into the text and we're going to make that auto size. Let's just do 156. And we can change the font to whichever font you want. This is just the extended font from uh, TextMess Pro. Alright, so with that button like that, the last thing we're going to do is add on that extend it button here. So if we start doing extend it, you'll see that script available. And you can see below that we have the serialized fields we mentioned with the hover effect, the sounds, and then if you want to mute it or not. And then for the last piece here, we have the different colors. Alright, All right, so now that we're in the game scene, see when we hover, you can hear that sound, see the button transition, see the scaling out click you see it's getting a little smaller so just to test we can go and do like 0.25 you can see now in this scale up here it's going to 1.5 it's easy change uh if we do mute see that it's muted now and then again if we want to go and do a different sound we're not going to hear it until we unmute it So you can see that's working there. Yeah, that's how you create the extended button script. And then again, you can attach this as needed to the different buttons you have to include the sound and the, the scaling and any other uh, animation.